Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we're in our beloved AGS 37 Vegan again and today we're looking at the radar. Now we're not going to really look at the radar in terms of firing missiles at things and employing applications like that. Instead we're going to give an overview and use it for searching. So let's get started. First we'll have a look around the cockpit at the items that we're going to be using and the different controls. Then we'll have a look at what controls we need to set to our keyboard and our mouse and our hodas and stuff like that. And then we'll get in the air. We've got some tasks to do. First of all, we've got a fleet of ships out there and we need to go and find them with our radar. Then we've got a bunch of tanks over here. We've got to go and find them with our radar. And then we've got some kind of relatively low mountains to go and look at in the east with our radar. Uh, and look at the terrain. So first of all is our radar scope. Here is our display in the middle of our uh, compass rows. Um, if you just ignore this light flashing. This is the RWR system around the radar and I've got a separate tutorial on that. Here is our radar panel. I guess we're just going to go through these one by one. So first uh, aircraft master mode. So that there BER is our standby mode uh, where the radar is essentially warming up. Here is our basic nav mode, which is where we're going to be employing our radar. And we've got other modes here, but uh, landing and attack and whatnot, but they're not uh, really uh, relevant to what we're going to talk about now. This switches between land and sea mode. So if we're going to be looking on the land, land. If we're going to be looking at the sea, we want the sea. Uh, we've got here, um, mm, how do I explain this? Um, a, linear, a linear and logarithmic radar gain switch. So um, basically all of the information that the radar is going to be looking at is going to be processed mathematically and um, they can be processed on a logarithmic scale or a linear scale if you remember your GCSE maths. Uh, essentially it's going to make the it's probably just best better if I show show you the difference when we're in the air rather than trying to explain explain it. It's going to give a different display on the radar of the same image basically is the best I can say at the moment. Under here if we can find him um, um, is our pulse frequency. I believe that is a PRF frequency, pulse repetition frequency. So radars shoot uh, radiation out at a certain frequency and uh, we can get a different return based on which pulse frequency we're sending out. So you've got normal and what have we got? Normal and short here we can change between. Uh, so if a target was a certain type of target may respond better on a certain PRF frequency. That's the best I've got way of explaining that at the moment. Then we've got here. Now I don't uh, really understand this one myself. It's passive recce mode. So presumably um, if you turn passive recce mode on the radar is no longer emitting but that doesn't make any sense to me because the radar always needs to emit otherwise it's just not working so if someone else would like to explain the passive recce to me that would be appreciated um, here we've got anti-jamming uh, zero is off i believe and one two three four five six seven seven eight uh, up to seven is it um, are a different ways of burning through hostile jammers i've never actually had to use that on the vegan so i don't really know how to explain it other than to just accept for the time being it's there here is our radar stick this is like a joystick and we can move it left right up down and that is for manipulating things on the radar screen on the top here three-way switch a zero one and two different modes to put the radar in we'll look at that again this knob here is our ranging knob to turn the range up and down of the radar. Uh, now it's important to point out it's not actually changing the ra range of our radar. The range of our radar is always infinite, um, essentially to the edge of the universe. Um, it's just actually changing the display of our radar, uh, the range display of our radar. Under here, I can't really get to look at it. We've got another three-stage trigger under here known as our fix trigger. It gives us three uh, modes of fix. That is for manipulating items in the radar. Uh, we'll go over that later. We've got our memory button, I believe that is. We'll look at that later. And somewhere, I'm not exactly sure where it is on here, we've also got a radar elevation switch. To explain that, I usually explain it by saying that our radar scan area is roughly in the shape of a slice of cake. We are at the pointy end of the slice of cake, and it heads out in that direction and in that direction to form our slice of cake. Our slice of cake can be aimed up and it can be aimed down in all aircraft and our elevation uh, switch changes that if we want to scan up or scan down so we may look at that later um, so if you were flying relatively high and your target you wanted to look at was relatively low you would change the elevation down and vice versa um, it's a good point to explain that this is essentially a ground radar now it does search you can use it in air to air uh, for locking up hostile uh, aircraft as well I've done I've shown that in a separate video about uh, in the air to air mode of the Vigan air to air missile fighting so we're not going to go through that we're just going to look at the air to ground usage of it today scanning for ground targets right so we've gone over the various buttons and switches now always useful now there's no way you can actually go and press those things in the cockpit actually use your mouse to press on them you'd never get anywhere so we're going to look at uh, the different commands so to move our radar stick we've got radar stick up down left 
and right. Uh, we've got radar elevation up and radar elevation down. Um, you can bind them here to the keyboard or the HOTAS as you see fit. We've got uh, the radar range increase and the radar range decrease. We've got the radar modes, A0, which is basically off, uh, A1 and A2. We'll go through them shortly. And we've got our TV fixed switches. We've got TV, uh, T0 switch, TV switch, and T1 switch. Okay, uh, maybe I'll explain at this point actually. The T switches are used for doing things with the radar. So you're not just looking, you're manipulating points, you're essentially doing things for, for, for weaponry, for weapon employment. Uh, now, those I cover in the various tutorials, like the RB04 anti ship missile, the RB15 anti ship missile, the R75 missile. So we're not going to go through them now because what we're doing is just looking at the searchability of the radar at the moment. But just accept for the time being that they are there okay so back we go we're in nav mode the radar has warmed up next we're going to look at the master modes um so a0 is basically off so nothing's been displayed then we've got a1 that is our base mode for turning the radar on we've turned it on and we've got a display so let's have a look what we've got so this is essentially um our slice of cake that i was describing earlier the thing that's um slewing left and right that is our actual radar scan beam so the radar scan beam is a very thin beam that moves left and right and it only highlights highlights or sees uh, an object once it's over the top or scanning that object the time where it's not on top of that object it's basically uh, as kept in memory and displayed on the scope now this is if you like a kind of um, actual representation of what's ahead of us it, it, as you can see that that is our, sh uh, our slice of cake to the left and right and the distance is shown here uh, the range that's shown here and we can change that range as, sh as with the buttons shown earlier to 15 kilometers 30 kilometers 60 kilometers or 120 kilometers so if something was out here at the top that would be 120 kilometers if we were down in 15 uh, kilometers and something was at the top here that would be 15 kilometers okay uh, this is scanning left to right with a total arc i believe of 120 or just over 120 degrees um, as well as that we've got this line here this horizontal line which is essentially our artificial horizon if we were to roll our plane left it would roll left so that we can basically fly the plane while looking down at the, uh, the, uh, the radar scan next is our a2 mode a2 um <laughs> a tough one to explain this this is called b-scope mode pretty much all planes with the radar have a b-scope mode so you, you have the previous mode which was like a realistic representation this is a b-scope mode and it's stretched our slice of cake into a square or known as a b-scope if you've flown uh, simpler planes like the f-15 it, its base mode is the b-scope um, and where it stretches it into a square uh, as it's not a proper uh, representation of what the plane's seeing i like to say off b-scope uh, but it's there in case you want it. That's all I've got to say for that for the moment. Regards uh, elevation, most planes have a radar antenna elevation um, symbology somewhere. This doesn't appear to have it. If I'm wrong, then let me know, please. But I can't seem to tell if my radar is aiming up or down it would be nice to know if there was some sort of symbology for that somewhere okay with that the next thing to do is get airborne so we're on the ground at the moment there's basically nothing to scan so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be imagining our slice of cake in front of us and we're going to be when once we're in the air shining that scan of cake down slightly at the ground i don't know what the exact elevation deflection is but i'd imagine 10 degrees or something like that downwards uh, and that radiation is going to hit the ground and any things that are on the ground and reflect into our receiver. Uh, then once it's been processed from the receiver, it's going to be displayed on our scope here. Basically, flat uh, ground or fat C is going to be uh, shown as just this, uh, this generic light green color. Objects that are not flat, like a house, uh, a tower, a tank, a ship a mountain is going to be uh, reflected and shown back as a dark object so whatever object it is that's not flat ground is going to be shown as a dark object uh, and that's how we're going to do it so first thing we're going to do is take off try and find those ships by eye oh uh, sorry by using the radar uh, without cheating and let's go and try and do that bird is on rotate gear up whoopsie little high Okay, now where's the sea? Where's the sea? Where is the sea? I can't see the sea anywhere. There it is. I see it. Right, so let's head in this direction. 
First of all, let's uh, sort out our scan range, or our display range. So we're going to go to 60 kilometers, I usually find most useful. So that's 60 kilometers there. Uh, now the first thing we can see is a bunch of reflections coming back at us. Um, these could essentially be mountains, but in this case it's clearly obvious because it's a nice clear day that these are the buildings. These buildings are reflecting radar returns, picked up by our receiver, and they are displaying as dark. Uh, now you can see um, that you've got these kind of dark lines behind uh, these dark objects that's uh, i call it a radar shadow i don't know what it's really called but because i can't see behind these objects i can't see behind the, these towers uh, then we get this uh, this area of where the radar basically can't see behind them it can't get any reflection from the ground okay so there's nothing obvious that's a ship there so we're going to carry on maybe i am going to actually go up to 120. uh the next thing i want to do um is I want to go to C mode, so we're going to go to C mode there. Um, I can't see anything at the moment, which is a little bit disconcerting. Ah, hello, look to the right there. There are some dots there. After a while, you just get used to what these things look like. Where do they go? There they are. Hang on, I'll pause it in a minute so we can have a proper look. Level out there. Okay, we can see these dots here. That's probably going to be the ships because we know that scene that's the only thing it can be out there really um so what i'm gonna do is maybe we can see if we can clear that image up first of all i'm going to zoom back in so we can get a there we go got a better display of them whoops sorry why don't i just turn my autopilot on okay um why don't we see if we can clear that up a bit from log to linear and these are the things you can only really uh, learn by trying them out. There's, I can't really explain how these things work. No, that's pretty crap. Don't want that. Let's check our pulse repetition frequency. If we can. I should have bound that to a button. No, doesn't help. Am I going to crash into that tower? Oh, yes, I am. So we can turn that off. So that is about the best we're going to get from those ships now. Let's pause that before I crash. And we can actually see them 30 miles out. There they are little ships and so that's how i found the ships now with this radar you can um, manipulate and employ weapons um you use that by using the radar stick left right up down also the tv fix one two uh and tv buttons that you use to manipulate uh symbology on the radar here uh, like i said we'll show them in the two proper tutorials so we're not going to go over them now just accept that that is there uh, so nothing else to show for the sea. What we're going to do is turn in land and start searching for uh, tanks in a minute, which will be much harder because they're going to be against undulating terrain. They're much smaller objects. It's going to be much harder. Uh, but we shall give it a go. So let's unpause. Let's turn the autopilot off. Let's get the hell out of here. Pause that and give ourselves a very rough idea of where this guy is, is so we can at least go in the right direction. It's going to be roughly about 155, so let's get on that. That's pretty 20 or 30 miles away, I'd imagine. So 155 is there. We almost zero chance of uh, seeing them at this range, but we'll do what we can. So first thing is land selector. Um, now I could go up high and aim the radar antenna down, but. I don't really want to do that. I think it's going to be probably harder to see them, if anything. Um, I'm going to instead go fairly low. And what they're going to do is hopefully cast a bigger radar shadow like that and be easier for me to see. Oops, going the wrong way. Right, where are these little monkeys? Right, I'm at 60 clicks at the moment. I'm seeing objects. Uh, what's that down on our 12 o'clock? We've got a mass on our 12 o'clock. That's almost certainly that town there. I'm going to go down a little bit more. We've got an object there at about 25 kilometers, uh, that dot there. That is going to be useful. We're just going to put myself on autopilot because my trim's all messed up for some reason. Sweet, it doesn't work. Let's get rid of that. Let's try heading towards this dot here. I've got a good feeling about it. Um, what else? So let's start messing with our long and linear. Log and linear, let's see if we can uh, enhance those returns at all. Yes, that's enhanced that no end. So we've got a lovely, lovely big blip to follow there now. I don't, I still don't really know what it is. It's now 15 kilometers or so. Ah, it's going to be that tower there, look. You see that lovely big return we're following, that dot there. Really big and tall and, and, and 
uh, the darkness doesn't really show the altitude of the object really it's just the um, aggressiveness as the return is what I like to say so it's a big tall flat sided structure it seems to give a really big return like that anyway that is not our tanks so we are cocked up there so let's keep going um, let's turn our back to log I'm just going to try a different PRF. I don't think this is going to make any difference at all. I will give it a go. Oh, I can't reach it anyway. Um, so let's keep scanning. So we can see when we turn left, we've got our uh, artificial horizon bar that shows we turn left or right. Allows us to fly. Make sure we don't. Make sure we don't fly into the ground. We have an object to our one o'clock there. Twenty clicks out. Oh, <laughs> I found them with my eyes. Um, Okay, annoyingly, I've just found them with my eyes before the radar. The radar didn't see them. Annoyingly, because I did this in practice earlier on, and I got a lovely big contrast. Um, so that is annoying to see that. But why don't we um, give it another go? Why don't we try zooming in first? Maybe they are giving a return. Ah, I think they are. They are. I would just uh, didn't have my zoom on the thing right. That, I think, is the return there. You see those little dots there? That, I believe, is going to be our guys when we go over them. So let's zoom out, uh, zoom in even more. 15 clicks. Yep, I reckon that's them. There we go. So, yep, uh, and you can see how sharp they are. Um, that's really the, uh, sharp and long. That's the only real indication that that is our trail of tanks. Um, so it's like, you need loads of skill to use this radar. I certainly can't use it very well, as you can see. But that shows that it is doable. And then you can do things with that radar to... Um, employ weapons on them right that's that um so next i'm going to zoom forward into those mountains and we'll just have a quick look at terrain right so we've reached the terrain and we're going to start seeing again some returns on our radar <clears throat> excuse me first thing to note that these aren't particularly aggressive gradients on these mountains not like in the caucuses where you get the big almost vertical mountains in some places so i'm not respect uh, expecting the returns to be too strong <clears throat> excuse me um, and also one thing to point out is that obviously a radar works with line of sight the radar radiation can't go through the ground so we can only see essentially what we can see with our eyes here um, so it, it's, if there was something of interest behind this mountain here that you wanted to scan with your radar obviously you can't see it until it's got line of sight and so what we're going to see is probably some big radar radar shadows at some point but uh, let's just keep going and just, um, just have a look at the radar I'm going a bit fast at the moment another thing to point out our radar uh, altitude warning light here our red uh, light based on the radar um, or radar altitude when you get uh, below a certain height that um, that will show red right so because we can't see very far above these first peaks we're going to need to zoom in a bit so let's go into 30 and see what we've got I'm going to see love, some lovely returns coming out there let's have a look at that so these are essentially uh, the mountains you can see the, oh, that son of a gun there that's probably going to be him something over the right there might actually be that town i'm not entirely sure um out of interest let's go to linear and see the difference we can get we've got some much stronger returns now with linear processing um basically the same returns just much more contrast in here so you can uh, see things much easier uh let's just carry on for a little bit for fun see so if we can uh, focus on this mountain in front of us it's fairly big Yep, some more lovely big returns. You can see those um, the defi definition in those peaks is really good. And you can see you can't. You can see there's not much on the right here uh, in this quadrant here, and that's presumably because this mount this mountain here, which is like one or two kilometres, is blocking the view. It can't see beyond that. That's why you've got this big shadow here, and you can't see anything here. Uh, so that's that. Can't really think of much else to say. Um, now, I'm not very good with this radar, as you probably noticed. It's just an overview. But you can, if you get really good at these filters and using it and whatnot, you can um, literally sniff out really small items, even lampposts and stuff like that uh, are modelled in it. So uh, you can use it really effectively once you get used to it. Um, that's all I can think of saying. I hope that helps. Go and scan some stuff with your vegan radar. And we'll see.